And so to say that we're somehow more than the body, separate from the body, I can't agree with that. I think what we're coming to realize now, though, progress is an illusion. So to think that the only meaning life could have is to have your own genetic child with a woman and pass on evolution and your good genes into the future. If we have to get rid of that idea of evolution and see that we are responsible, that whatever we are, even though I, I wouldn't say it's a soul that exists in here separate from the body, the body is what gave rise to this, to our awareness and our consciousness and our compassion. And, you know, you were saying that um, straight guys can't express emotion. And um, I think part of the reason is because they have such a disembodied sense of themselves. They think that they are inside here somewhere and that they have to protect themselves from the other and they have to be strong and, and you know, have authority and command and respect. And those are all good things to have. And, I mean, that's, that's what the ego really represents. A distancing from the passions and an ability to control yourself, which you are the subject, the ego, controlling the self, which is your body, or anything your body is able to manipulate in the world out there. That view of the self is, is a distancing from the body, so it distances you from emotions. And you know, sex is so easy to repress. Because what sex, I think, really represents is the spirit, is God. And I don't mean that in an anthropomorphic way. It's not a person that lives in the sky. It's just the feeling of an orgasm when thoughts just disappear and when you're totally united with the world, with the person that you're with and with the world, I mean, that's God and you can't say anything about it. But the difference between sex and, and God is that sex is... It happens once in a while. God is always, and that's why it's easy to miss. You have to like, get attached to this symbol of God that exists in the physical world. Because the real thing is just so ever-present that if we ever became aware of that, we would, we would give up chasing after the sexual side, the physical side. But then, at the same time, it, that doesn't mean you stop having sex. It just means you lose the kind of desire that causes uh, what Ian's friend did. That's kind of um, an attachment to sex that's a little stronger than it uh, really needs to be. I mean, you know, people do what they do, and that's why sex is so diverse. But there's only really one sex, one meaning of sex, and that's God. And, you know, I'm not using that word in any um, dogmatic way. I'm just talking about love. We'll call it that. There's a difference between love and sex. People will agree with that, I think. I say God, and it, it, it brings up scary uh, images in a lot of your heads, but love. There's a difference between sex and love. And I think sometimes um, some bisexual guys will have attraction to their straight friends. But it's more, I think, a desire for intimacy and emotion. And it kind of gets... Um, projected in the wrong way because there's a certain taboo against not being an, a subject inside here that's supposed to be in control of the body because it's like you're giving in to your, to your passions 
to your bodily desire whenever you um, desire your friend. You're supposed to be men who don't give up their selves for the sake of intimacy. And yet, uh, I think sometimes that desire just for the intimacy, the real love and not the sex, gets confused and we think, oh my God, I want to be intimate with my friends, so I must want to have sex with them. But I think, I think that's just a misplaced desire for God, for love, and to be able to share emotion with others, no matter what sex they are. You know, but sex is, is really one of the hardest things to talk about because everybody has some kind of um, issue with it. It could be, a, you know, it's just like, what's normal? That's the thing. What's normal? You can't say. You just can't say. There's a certain, you know, social illusion of normalcy and regular, um, what a regular sexual encounter or feeling or image or you know what it's supposed to be but everybody has their own you know uh, their own ways of getting off you know and we can't ever say that some are right and some are wrong unless of course it's you know something like um, uh, molestation or, or rape that seems uh, off limits just because we don't, I mean, it's not something to get philosophical about, let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, I think uh, hopefully I said some stuff that um, was insightful or maybe I'm just giving a self-analysis right now. But um, if I did offend anybody, I didn't intend to. And I hope anybody that was offended will respond and tell me why. And um, I'll respond to you and say why I either um, agree with what you say and I'm sorry or whatever. I mean, we can communicate. Let's just not react to each other. Let's respond to each other. So um, thanks for listening. And uh, this is an interesting uh, conversation. <laughs>